coming to you all the way live from the studios of 90.7 on your FM dial, WWOZ in New Orleans. This is DJ Davis with the Brass Band Jam. <laughs> Especially jazz funerals and stuff, because they need the band for the jazz funeral, they need the band for the party, um, they need the bands for parades and stuff, and sometimes people just have, have the bands around just for fun. <laughs> Second Library is a very interesting they're, they're part of the African American culture in New Orleans. And you have social pleasure clubs, social eating pleasure clubs, who come out on Sundays and they wait around for four hours. By the 1850s, there are black brass bands present in New Orleans. Uh, but the real impetus to expansion comes with the Civil War. The uh, occupation by uh, Benjamin Butler's Union troops, the only way they could quell local disturbances they found was through music. And so uh, Patrick Sarsfield Gilmore, who was the bandmaster uh, under Butler, used to hold these monster concerts at the foot of Canal Street where they would have brass bands entertaining the populace. Uh, this, in other words, created an even greater emphasis on the importance of the brass band in the world's environment than had existed in the antebellum period. And we find uh, within the African American community, once the plantation system is broken up, large numbers of blacks are coming to New Orleans seeking work. And the way in which they are uh, able to adapt to uh, what it's like to live in an urban environment uh, is through various social aid and pleasure clubs, uh, fraternal organizations, benevolent associations, all of which have bands which they use for specific functions. So it might be they're throwing a banquet or having a parade of a marching club or in most cases a funeral. Uh, what you get for your dues is uh, a big funeral with a brass band. Uh, at the turn of the century and through the mid-1920s, you probably have hundreds of brass bands in New Orleans. There's the Excelsior, there's the Onward, there's the Tuxedo, Henry Allen Sr. Uh, you can go on and on. There are white and black brass bands working a lot. Look at all the opportunities, Carnival, St. Patrick's Day, Labor Day, marching club activities, uh, and the so-called jazz funeral. And when it comes to the brass band heritage in New Orleans, the uh, phenomenon is probably the greatest interest to the outside world is what's referred to as the jazz funeral. And there is a, a kind of ritual that goes with the jazz funeral. On the way to the cemetery, only dirges are played. It's a very respectful, solemn occasion. Yeah. 
brick and mortar. Jazz funeral is right. You know, right they say in the Bible, they say you must rejoice with somebody on past the way. He didn't want to do exactly that. He would start off with a slow funeral third. As soon as the car leaves the procession, he called it cut the body, and it would break up to a big old parade and stuff. <laughs> In the 1970s, you get a whole new wave of young people entering the brass band field, and this is largely due to the efforts of Danny Barker, a New Orleans musician who went to New York in 1930, had a very successful career in New York City, playing with Cab Galloway and just about everybody else you can think of, including Billy Holiday, Dizzy Gillespie, and others, Charlie Parker. But in the mid-70s, he decides to return to New Orleans, and he puts together what's called the Fairview Baptist Church Brass Band, which was his attempt to revive the tradition, get young people involved, keep them out of trouble, teach them musical skills, keep the brass band tradition alive. However, the uh, real action today comes out of a whole new wing of a brass band renaissance that probably derives from the activities of the Dirty Dozen Brass Band between the late 1970s and 1984 when they really kind of emerge as the, uh, the focal point of a brass band revival which is not traditional but instead is experimental. Its primary concern is innovation, taking a brass band uh, instrumentation and doing something a little different with it. Still, we exactly still like the traditional brass band. All thing is that we play different music because uh, say like we play a, a song that we wrote you still have the traditional uh, fundamentals there. You still got the riff, you still got the tool playing this part, you still got the drummers doing this sort of. But what it is that we modernize the music a lot. You know, everybody's young and stuff. We kind of take music from rap music, uh, take hymns, put them together, uh, take music from anything off the radio, uh, anything we hear, uh, even slangs we hear in the street, people saying this stuff. So it's not that we're so different, just that we modernize the music so much that it seems like we're different. But we're just a little funkier. Now that <laughs> that, that would make us a little different. Because what well, traditional music you can still dance to it, and some of you listen to it without music, it's hard to really stay still. You gotta get up and dance. Well, at first I had a traditional jazz show, and I would play the Rebirth, and you'd get old people calling up and saying, These young kids sound like garbage. But then you'd also get some people calling up and saying, Hey, this stuff is great. So when I when I got my own brass band show, you know, and it, oh, I, it, it, was, it replaced a traditional jazz Sunday afternoon slot. And so I had all these, all these people, you know, saying, This stuff sounds like garbage. This stuff is awful. These kids don't know what they're doing. When I started getting calls, you know, like, this is like people were, you know, a lot of checking in from the Magnolia, and I'm checking in from the Lafitte, and I'm checking in from Treme, and you know, and how all these people call in. People say, you know, man, I saw this big car rolling down the street, just booming your show, you know. Or these guys would like drag their uh, speakers out onto the, you know, porch of the project and just crank out the whole courtyard, you know. And when I got started to get that kind of enthusiastic reaction, I was like, that's my audience. There are more and more young kids who are using the brass band as their vehicle for personal expression. That uh, in some places it has to be a rap band in New York City or Los Angeles. A young person going into music, they're going to choose rap, they're going to get a boom box or uh, maybe a rhythm track and then they're going to rap on it. Well, here what we find is that the weapon of choice for the young musician is something that could put them in a brass band. Dude, what it really means to me is, you know, showing the people that there's another way, another way to go by doing things, especially the, the youth today, since with all this violence and, you know, people doing crack and drugs and stuff, so uh, we try to make our music very positive. And uh, you know, I figure if, if they hear us, a, a group of young black guys playing so positive together and stuff, then you know, it might make a difference to everybody. And uh, so that's why our music really make a, we love it and make a big difference to us too.
Yeah, we're planning to always stay in the Navy. We're planning to, you know, as long as we get to the day we die ourselves, to keep doing the regular parade, playing in the little ballroom and stuff like that because that plays a part of the role for the music because, like, the people feed off our energy, we feed off their energy. And that helps us create new songs that we can watch them dance and just make them want to play more and more, you know, more explosive. So we can always play in the Navy, but we don't want to play. And a lot of the musicians who, um, come from the generation before the brass bands came up felt too that like a lot of that old music was corny and hokey and now there's a feeling that it's maybe not so much hokey as it was it's an essential part of or like the germ of you know what's essentially New Orleans and essentially New Orleans music and New Orleans funk and so I would say you know is it while you're looking at everything that's new and different about the brass bands and how they change is that you should also concentrate on how everything is the same and continuing. What's so hip about the new about the new brass bands is that it not only brought out an explosion or revitalization of uh, cultural ethnic music that had been sort of bubbling and fermenting for a long time and was able to mix new styles like you know funk and rap and this music is that it brought out everything that's essentially New Orleans and tied it right back in with the street parades and tied it right back in with second line funerals. It revitalized a lot a whole lot of uh, traditions and stuff that were perceived by some people as dying out.